Hello, beach friends. I have another fun beach walk planned for us today. And if this beach looks a little familiar, well, that's because we're back on Kais Island. But our last trip was at high tide. And today we're going to be visiting later in the day at low tide. And that means we may see critters like this giant Atlantic cockle. That big tongue looking thing is actually called the animal's foot. And since it's alive, we're going to put it back in the water before we start exploring what else Kais might have in store for us. Now we are definitely going to find some pretty shells and even a really bendy weirdo shell. And I do repeat a bucket list find, which is always really exciting. So if you're ready to see what's on this island for us today, let's go to the beach. So this looks a little bit different than it normally does. This is low tide over here at Kais Island. And typically I would recommend that you shell in the water, but for whatever reason, a lot of times the water here just doesn't have the goodies. So I'm gonna concentrate on where I think the goodies are gonna be. And it definitely looks like there's going to be some fun things for us to go through. Now it is a little bit later in the day than I typically shell when I, I like to get out there first thing the last time we came we did come in the morning so this is in the afternoon at low tide and this part of the island does look a little bit picked over not all that much here so i'm going to start meandering toward the center of the island and here we have one of our resident birds an osprey and it also did have a meal in its clutches they do uh, hunt for fish they will hover and then dive in and grab their meals kind of fun Looks like here we hunted down a couple of bubbles and an auger. Oh, and then this was a bummer because that is an alphabet cone that's just beat up and faded. So I'm not going to collect that cone. But this little Jasper cone, why sure, I've got room for that little shell. So we'll go ahead and get that Jasper cone. Oh, and an elegant Docenia. And we know that's different from the discodocenia because we can really see those ridges in the shell. So that is an elegant docenia. And here we have one of the more colorful arcs that we can find. That is a turkey wing. What's the common name for that fine shell? A turkey wing. And Kais, you gotta be careful when you bend down. You might end up impaling yourself. But safely, I managed to pick up this banded tulip outstanding. Wouldn't be Kais without picking up a couple of those. And this lovely lettered olive. Yep, nice shiny pointy lettered olive. Wonderful. All right, and here we have a half buried shell. And so I'm looking all over the place. In the sand, in the water, is a piece, you know, poking through. Here we found a little horse conch. And a colorful moon snail. This shell has two names, colorful moon snail or a gaudy nautica. So you will ref I will refer to that shell with both of those names. Here is a pear whelk. So that is one of the few whelks we can get down here. Wow, this shell, it actually looks giant compared to the other little bits and pieces. So that is a Florida cone. Always keep the cones. Yep, that's in pretty great shape. I'm gonna hold on to that. Oh, it's something bright orange. Bright orange calico scallop. Not terribly hard to find those and very exciting when you get those really brightly colored shells. Here's a fantastic apple murex. So this one's even a little bit lacy like its cousin, but that is an apple murex oh oh alphabet cone i so wish we had met sooner it looks like this one's been kind of rolling around for a while it is pitted 
a little bit beat up. Oh, what a drag. Another, another missed alphabet cone. Oh, look at, we have a top. Okay. Yep. Top of a tool. <laughs> Feeling rather defeated. Fine. It's just a piece, but let's just call that foreshadowing. And then here, yeah, I'm thwarted once again. That is just a piece of an alphabet cone. And that's okay. I suspect we're going to find some shells. So here I'm trying to pull this lightning whelk out from the tree stump here. That's a pretty nice looking lightning whelk. Anything bigger than like, say, two inches, a pretty good sized shell. Terrific lightning whelk. Awesome. And since that tree was good to me, let's see what's kind of hiding in the roots here. Excellent. A banded tulip and another banded tulip a pair of banded tulips hiding in that tree fantastic now what do we got oh another little bubble and some bits and pieces all right there is a one of those gaudy nauticas it's a little beat up i'm not gonna collect that but wait what do we got here all right, that looks like a gulf oyster drill. I'm gonna hold on to that. Oh, some very pretty scallops. So those, that one on the bottom is a bay scallop. And then those two pink ones, pink and purple ones, those are calico scallops. And then that is a ribbed cantharus. I think I like them so much because I can really identify them. This one looks a little bit more ribbed cantharus-y. So that's a little bit more easy to identify, but still two ribbed cantharus shells. Oh, now this is a little unusual. This is a calico scallop, but it's all kind of one color. Typically they've got a couple different colors kind of mixed in. Lovely. And another Florida cone. All right, this one does have a little bit of pitting, but again, the cones are, in my opinion, are great shells. So even if they're just a little bit beat up, I'm gonna keep them anyway. Whoa, guess what that's not. All right, so that is not a little horse conch. That is also one of the ribbed cantharus shells. So just another thing to kind of make IDing these shells difficult. So there on the left is a ribbed cantharus and the middle is a ribbed cantharus. And on the right, that is a horse conch. So again, eh, I don't... <laughs> Sometimes you can tell by the shape and the color and other times you just got to really do your research. So here's where we are. The water is out there. It doesn't seem to be much in the shell department. So I'm kind of sticking to the bits here. Here we have a little banded tulip. There's another little banded tulip. I'm just kind of looking at the bits and pieces. So it was one of those days where, you know, I'm looking, but it feels like if I stopped and really got down and looked, there was all sorts of great little shells here. So doing a little bit of a pan, gonna go back and grab some of those. Here we have a little murex. Let's see if I can figure out. That looks like an apple murex to me, actually. So that's a little apple murex and a little drill. Mm, maybe Gulf Oyster, maybe. We're gonna go, it's a white shell. <laughs> Here is a little horse conch. And then we have this juvenile fighting conch. I was just gonna show you, and I decided I probably should hold on to that. Let's see what else we got. That is another little Florida fighting conch. And this is a banded tulip. And did I miss anything? Probably, but let's see what I didn't miss. Terrific, another one of those little jasper cones. Oh, dropped my banded tulip. So yeah, if you just kind of slow down for a minute, there was all sorts of little treasures. Awesome, another little horse conch. And a common nutmeg. Love the inside of those nutmegs with that little twirly piece, awesome. And this was kind of weird. Now. I know it's a little worn down, but I still think that that is a Sanibel turret. Not the right color though. It's supposed to be brown, so I could completely be wrong, but that's what I'm thinking. And it does have a little bit of tone to it, so it's not completely white. So I don't know. 
maybe a uh, sandal bell turret, maybe pretty white shell. Let's just go with pretty white shell. So here's another little common nutmeg. Oh, cute little thing. Just gonna kind of rest it there because I spied something fantastic. Look at this. So this is a little lace murex. And when the shells are tiny like that, that's the color. They're kind of like that rose color. And then as the shell gets bigger, sometimes the tip of the ro of the lace murex will still have that pink on it. I didn't find one today, but it was really great to find one of those tiny bright pink little shells. So that is an apple murex. Bummer. I wish I could have showed you a lace murex with that little pink top, but I'm not going to complain. That's actually a pretty decent looking apple murex. And another real pretty calico scallop. Yeah. Nice, nice color on that calico scallop. Another Florida cone. Pretty cool. Florida cones eat marine worms. Weird, right? Go figure. But yep, another Florida cone. All right, now just kind of scanning. And look, there's so many little goodies. What do we got here? Another one of those rib canthus shells. And a big old lace murex. Does not have the pink top. Bummer, but still a nice looking shell. Nice looking. All right, it's going to need a little bit of work, but all in all, it looks great. And this little weirdo. So that is a tinted cantharis. Doesn't look a thing like the ribbed cantharis. Once again, just one of those things that make you go, hmm. So that is a tinted cantharis. And then here we have a colorful moon snail. Now, typically those are harder to find anywhere except here on Kais. For whatever reason, these moon snails love Kais. And that works for me. So another real pretty colorful moon snail. Looks like I stopped once again just to kind of scan. Oh, a little lightning whelk. Terrific. I hope I'm going to get that spiny jewel box. Excellent. A little spiny jewel box. So some of the things you can kind of see, some of the stuff's half buried. Here we have a little lavender. I'm going to go with mauve mouth drill only because it's a little bit purple. I, I really don't know for sure, but that's what I'm thinking. Look at this beautiful mess. Another little nutmeg. Oh, uh oh, looks like it had to repair itself. Beautiful inside. So that little dent on the outside, you can kind of tell the critter had some trouble along the way, but we still got ourselves a common nutmeg. A calico scallop with that fun little sunburst pattern on it. Yep, love those calicos. All right, now what do we see? Oh, banded tulip. And there's another one of those gaudies. Just check. And I'm not going to keep that. No. Nope. Be a little bit picky because I do have to carry everything I find around with me the entire time I'm on the island. This is for you scanners, you people who like to scan the piles. There's another gaudy. I think that will pass the muster. We'll hold on to that one. And a little top snail. So amongst the bits and everything, there's definitely some whole shells in there. And like I said, it seems like when I just kind of stop for a minute, all of a sudden these shells just kind of jump out. I like the yellow prickly cockles. So that is a yellow prickly cockle. And oh, oh, all right. So here, check this out. So this poor critter at some point had some trouble. Now, whether the shell broke or the animal was damaged, it just kind of continued and kept growing. And its shell is just a little bit wonky. So that is not the way it is supposed to look. It makes it like a little bit of a freak shell. That's what we shellers call it. So I'm going to hold on to that little weirdo freak lightning whelk. And I'll probably hold on to this shell. Nothing freaky about it. Just a cool, big, fat, lettered olive. Fantastic. Oh, and buried in the muck. Excellent. 
Real pretty Florida cone. Nice bright color on that. Wonderful. Now, since we're not really dealing with the water so much, I don't know that it really matters that the tide is out. I never really considered it, but right now it is very low tide. I'm going to relocate and let you have some beach time. All right, looks like I found, check this out. So we have a banded tulip with a colorful moon snail in there. Now it happens that you'll have other shells jammed in there, but not typically one that you'd want to collect. So pretty cool, banded tulip and colorful moon snail. Oh, beautiful orange Florida fighting conch. Don't worry, I'll come get you. Yep, it's empty. I know there's stuff in there, but it's just other shells kind of jammed in there. And I just really liked that orange base color. Well, <laughs> there's so many things I like the, about those shells, but that one happened to be the orange. That's what really kind of kind of poked out at me. I see another little glowing shell. I suspect we're looking at a little horse conch. Yes, we are. A very, very bright little Florida horse conch. Oh, good. Fab. It's almost red. Beautiful color on that. And this, oh, I got really excited. Is this an albino Florida fighting conch? So I'm really giving it a good look and I'm trying to see, is there any color on it? And I'm not seeing color, but albinos kind of have a specific white to them. So I was a little bit on the fence. I did come out here with SWF Shell Guide and she informed me that unfortunately that's just probably a very bleached out Florida fighting conch. So I'm going to save it as a placeholder until I find my actual albino. So all is not lost. I'm going to hold on to that anyway. Wow. And it's always really exciting to find these big bay scallops. We don't typically find shells that are bigger in the scallops department down here. So that is a terrific find. That is a big bay scallop. Awesome. And another little gaudy. I like to appreciate the different colors. This one's just very pale, very light, very delicate colors on that pretty little colorful moon snail. Oh, okay. So I'm going for the angel wing here. So here's an angel wing that's buried. And actually when they get bigger, they really are pretty sturdy. The younger ones are, aren't as sturdy. This one, unfortunately, is broken. I am not going to keep that, and it really is a bummer because it would have been beautiful, but oh well. Wish we had met sooner. All right, I'm gonna unearth this other buried scallop. It looks kind of slimy, but check this out. Look how pretty. So that is another bay scallop. It does have that little bit of coloration on it. Sometimes they're white, a little bit of red. Oh, while I'm here, might as well go ahead and get that banded tulip and this calico clam. Might as well. And another lightning whelk. Not bendy, but super awesome. Great color, nice size. Excellent lightning whelk. Oh, little crab. And here we have a giant Atlantic cockle. That is just the shell of that big old critter in the very beginning of the video that we put back in the water, a giant Atlantic cockle. And a buttercup leucine. So it's not that buttery. That probably means it only has half the calories. So it's a kind of buttery leucine. And so here, this is what Kais looks like. Usually that muck is kind of covered with the water. It is low tide at this point. And then this right here is a spot I kind of like to shell right at the water's edge. And you will notice that the shells in that kind of patch there, kind of greenish. And I suspect that's because they tend to stay in the water. The tides come and go. This one though does not have that kind of green hue. Beautiful banded tulip. And a lace that's, yeah, it's got a bunch of beach stuff on there. 
So we'll leave that, but let's just switch it out for this nutmeg. Fantastic little nutmeg. All right, what do we got next? <gasps> Something teeny tiny. So I was here and I was, I was picking up little ones and I wanted to show you this little sharp ribbed drill. I mean, just the tiniest little shell. And there's a couple of other of those small ones. I generally have a very hard time identifying the smaller shells, but I'm getting there, getting better at it. There's another bay scallop. Gorgeous, that'll clean up just fine. Very lovely. Oh, excellent. Barely needs any cleaning on that calico scallop. A little bit of white stuff will pick off, no problem. Really pretty calico scallop. And just kind of hiding in there. It's this other colorful moon snail, very pretty. Nice color. The aperture is ever so slightly broken, but that's not gonna stop me. I'm definitely gonna hold on to that beautiful gaudy nautica. Now, here we have a little piece of variable worm shell. So you will typically find little pieces of these. They do grow in colonies. And in case you were wondering what a colony of these things look like, well, I found one. So these guys will kind of congregate on the bottom of the sea floor. Mangroves can kind of grab a hold of them and they can kind of create reefs. So really kind of cool that these little worms that are actually distantly related to seraths can create these really cool colonies of worm shell. Kind of neat. Ooh, beautiful lace murex. And it's very white and I cannot tell if that is albino or if it's just white, either way, I'm definitely keeping that beautiful white lace murex. <gasps> okay, looks like I hit what we shellers like to call a little bit of a honey hole. This seems like a really good spot to see if we can find some goodies. All right, that lightning walk did not pass the test. What else we got? See some more of that variable worm shell. Here is a colorful moon snail. Let's see if there's any Florida fighting conchs that I just can't resist. I have to imagine there's at least one or two in here. And as I'm looking for that, I discovered this. Yay! All right, so that is a true tulip. I do not find them often. The banded tulips, I feel like you can find left and right, but that is a true tulip. And it's the whole thing this time. Unlike that little piece I picked up in the beginning. And I am going to clean that up. So stick around to the end of the video and I'll show you what that looks like without all that white stuff on it. So found this terrific little, little shelling spot. And it's, look, if you're going to be here on Kais, it's messy. So plan on getting dirty. And as I'm creeping around, I see it. It's calling to me. Oh, hello, golden olive. Just sitting there. I'm really, really excited. At this point, I know I just found one on Kiwaden, I don't know, a couple weeks ago. But still really exciting to find a golden olive. Isn't that beautiful? And then just look at it compared to the lettered olive. They're still, they're both very, very pretty. But to find that one with that different coloring, that golden color, that's a lot more rare, a lot more special. Very, very awesome. So I'm hoping Kais is a couple more goodies for me. And this is kind of what it looks like. You have the trees that are not really supposed to be here that can't survive in the salt water. And so they're gonna die off. And then you have the healthy trees like the mangroves that can tolerate the water. So they're gonna be hanging out more toward the inside of the island. They can survive no problem. Now, if you are planning on coming here, you're gonna need a boat. I have a kayak today. I did come with SWF Shell Guide, so I didn't have to drag my kayak down here, but you are gonna need some sort of tour or a boat or somehow to get here. You cannot get here by car. So that is something, if you plan on coming to Kais, I was curious because the weather is going to turn soon i'm not really going to be able to come here so i wanted to kind of visit as much as i could before our summer storms came here we have another one of those real pretty calico scallops 
quite lovely and needs a little cleaning, but that'll clean up just fine. So here's another little honey hole or, or part of one and getting out in that muck there, it's kind not treacherous and in this, well, yeah, maybe it is a little bit treacherous. You're, I've said it before, you're definitely gonna wanna bring shoes for your shelling here. You banded tulip and a hinged, is it empty? Yup. Hinged spiny jewel box. Awesome. And so here you're pretty safe here on the land, but it does get squishy and dirty. Oh, we're just gonna take that glass. That doesn't belong here. It gets squishy and dirty once you kind of get out into that mud. But boy, the shells, that's another apple murex. Here's another Florida cone. So if I had to say, honestly, I'd come here at any time. I've come at high tide, I've come at low tide. Just come, come, come to Kais if you can. And right here, I did film this in the very end of May. So this is the shells that you would expect to be here at the end of May. I will try to get back here at some point in during the summer because I do so love collecting shells like this gorgeous Florida fighting conch. Yep, Tw getting toward the end of my tour here. So I'll collect the heavier shells. And of course, these are light enough. The gaudy nautica is definitely going to grab probably as many as I can of those as well. Beautiful, colorful moon snail. <gasps> yep, I knew I was going for that gorgeous orange Florida fighting conch. Yeah, real pretty. Going to need a little bit of cleaning, but still gorgeous orange Florida fighting conch. And I've learned my lesson with the Florida Fighting Conks because they really, really can be quite heavy. Imagine about 10 of those is really going to weigh down your shell bag. So I tend to wait until I'm kind of, I know that I'm kind of leaving so that my shell bag is manageable for most of my trip. So I did come on this tour with SWFL Shell Guide. It is so much easier for me to just hop on a kayak instead of me dragging my own kayak down and launching it and everything. So if there is an opportunity for me to go out with Allie, who I highly recommend, I'm always gonna take her up on that offer. So I did go out with her and it was a super fun time. That is a cut ribbed arc. And so as I'm leaving, I'm just gonna scour and kind of pick up anything I can. I will admit I was running a little bit late and at one point I had to start running back to the kayak so you can imagine. Luckily there was no one there to see me so I got my backpack, my shell bag and I'm running. So yeah, that was kind of fun. But it really, actually it really was fun. The entire trip was fantastic. And it's going to start getting quite tough to find these shells soon. The shells do tend to hide in the summer so we're going to get creative. Don't worry, we'll, we'll find stuff. Now, speaking of stuff, here is some garbage I've removed from the beach. So it was only 0.55 ounces today, but I think every little bit counts. So I'm still a little over five pounds of garbage I've removed from the beaches. And then I removed a couple other pretty things like those Florida cones, that turkey wing, the Florida horse conch, some of those olives, the banded tulips. You can't go to Kais without grabbing some of those. A couple of those lightning whelks and a pear whelk. Well, a couple of pear whelks, actually, a bunch of those murex, in, the apple murex in the bottom, and then the lace murex are above them. A bunch of those juvenile Florida fighting conchs, the regular size fighting conchs, the, the ribbed cantharis shells, the nutmegs, the spiny jewel boxes, a bunch of those top snails, some calico clams, a bunch of tinies in that big Atlantic cockle. And of course, we got a couple of those scallops, some prickly cockles, here's some dystocenias, elegant docenias, bay scallops. And then moving into my favorite stuff is that kind of whitish. I know it's not really an albino Florida fighting conch, the true tulip, the bendy lightning whelk, the golden olive, that tiny little lace murex. So there were definitely fantastic treasures. I remember I told you we we're going to see this one really didn't need that much cleanup, just kind of picking off those white barnacles. And pretty much like I always say, you just leave that soak in bleach, you pick it off a little bit. Now, I could probably clean that up just a little bit more, but for the sake of making this video, that is where we're going to leave it. So everybody, thank you so very much. A special shout out to my Patreons. Thank you so very much for supporting me and allowing me to go out and do things like this and everybody else that comes along. Thank you. Thank you for the love, the comments, 
all the, all the good stuff we share. Now, next week, we're going at low tide on Fort Myers Beach. So I suspect we're going to find a couple of shells, see a couple of critters. Probably going to be pretty fun. So hope you have yourself a great week, and I will see you again next Sunday.